And Clapper, oh, what is his response? Just like Yates, just like Brennan, let's go after the president and attack him. I think that's uh, actually a very disturbing assault on the independence of the Department of Justice. And uh, I think when the president, this president or any president, tries to use the Department of Justice as kind of a, a private investigatory body, that's uh, not good for the country. The big thing here is this is not about spying on, on his campaign. It's about what the Russians are doing. Were they attempting to infiltrate the campaign? And that was the concern. And that was, uh, it, in my, my belief, is what the focus of, of this whole activity was about. The same clapper bragged about the FBI spying on the Trump campaign and said it was a good thing. This is problematic. And then there's good old Sally Yates, who signed off on, yes, one of the Pfizer warrants like Rosenstein and was emailing with Andrew Weissman, the most corrupt member of Mueller's team, after she recused, refused to enforce the travel ban. Yates is also trashing the president. Why? To save and protect herself. Watch this. And Donald Trump himself accusing the Obama administration of improperly targeting his campaign for an investigation. <coughs> uh, what's your response to everything you've heard over the weekend? Well, obviously, I'm not going to comment on the specific facts there. It's really up to the Department of Justice to decide what information should be made public with respect to that. But, you know, I think what we're seeing here is the president has just taken his all-out assault on the rule of law to a new level. Mm -hmm. And this time he is ordering up an investigation of the investigators who are examining his own campaign. You know, that's really shocking. Another hard-hitting interview by Liberal Joe. Now, all three of these deep state players are scared out of their minds. They're directly implicated in all of this. So it's time to ask, what did they all know? When did they all know it? And just like I've been saying about their deep state friend, James Comey, who, by the way, James, I warned you, you had the right to remain silent. You didn't listen. Anyway, instead of running their mouths, well, they might want to now begin to lawyer up, and many of them are. Yeah, James Comey hired three lawyers. The three people he leaked documents to. Great attorney-client privilege for everybody but me. Anyway, another big development to tell you about tonight. The soon-to-be-released DOJ IG report on the Clinton email server investigation is expected to slam FBI leaders just like Comey, Andrew McCabe, for taking weeks to review emails that were found on Uma Abedin's shared computer with Anthony Weiner. And the IG report is supposed to come out very soon. And if the Inspector General Horowitz does his job and his 500 employees, Comey and McCabe should be very worried tonight. All right, a lot of ground to cover. Joining us now, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva. I said to you last time, Joe, when you were on this program, I cringe. My mom was a prison guard. My dad worked in family court probation. And I have so many extended family members in the NYPD and the FBI. And you say bad cops. I know the 99% are not, that they're good people for this country. But we know tonight you have been right. And what we've been reporting, Sarah included, she has been right. Well, I think the sad thing about this is you watch someone like Sally Yates, who was the deputy attorney general under Obama and acting attorney general for a while, complain about the rule of law and the violation of it when she and Brennan and Comey and others destroyed the rule of law in the Obama administration. They traduced it. They besmirched it. They were so politically motivated that they have now destroyed the Department of Justice and the FBI. It is going to take a decade to rebuild the public trust in the FBI and the Department of Justice because Sally Yates, who just joined a fancy law firm in Atlanta, is going to need to lawyer up. The disgraceful performance of her and, of course, even more disgraceful, John Brennan, who led a conspiracy against the campaign of the opposing party's presidential nominee, and then when he won, did everything they could to frame him and his compatriots with false crimes. It is the greatest political scandal in American history, and shame on Sally Yates, and shame on John Brennan. 
House Republicans ramping up their investigation into the FBI's handling of the Hillary Clinton email probe. A joint House Judiciary and Oversight Committee probe has three witness interviews set for June, the first in more than four months. One of the three is a supervisor for FBI agent Peter Strzok, now infamous for exchanging anti-Trump text messages with another bureau official. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte weighing in earlier today. We want to know why it is that the FBI was handling these two different matters in such extremely different ways, showing an extreme bias that should never occur in a presidential election. Uh, and both Democrats and Republicans and independents all should be concerned about this. But Democrats are slamming the probe as an effort to distract from the special counsel's Russia investigation. President of Judicial Watch Tom Fitton joins me now. Thanks for joining us. So what do you, how do you respond to that criticism right there, that this is just about distracting from Russia? Actually, it's the opposite. The anti-Trump Russia investigation is de designed to distract from the real criminality that took place around the election time, which was Hillary Clinton's national security crimes and the cover-up and obstruction in terms of the criminal investigation by the FBI and DOJ into those crimes. It's never been about Russia. It's been about protecting Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration's misconduct to pr in protecting her. There are a lot of people who say that these people don't work in government any longer. So, you know, when you want to dive deep into what happened when, what's the relevance now when they're not out there still operating and doing these things? Well, we want to know if the FBI's uh, uh, decision making was impacted uh, by politics, as we suspect. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to the effort to uh, exonerate Hillary Clinton other than they wanted to protect someone who was a candidate for president of the party that was running the administration at the time. Uh, you know, how was the rule of law applied? Was it applied in a way that the American people expected? by both the FBI and Justice Department under Barack Obama. You know, and it's an uncomfortable issue, I think, for this administration and this Justice Department and FBI, because right now, Comey's rule stands, which was that Hillary Clinton didn't do anything that could have been prosecuted or should have been prosecuted, mm -hmm. that the rules against cl handling classified information weren't violated in a criminal way by her, uh, by, and it, we all know the controversy about how he applied the law, suggesting he didn't need intent, when in fact there probably was intent, and of course you didn't really need intent in terms of mishandling classified information to have it prosecuted, as other prosecution has shown. Mm -hmm. Is that the Justice Department's legal position as to Hillary Clinton? What James Comey said? I haven't heard one way or another. It, why not just wait for the IG report? I mean, there are so many different hearings and questions that it tends to, you know, maybe obfuscate what's really going on by having so many different investigations going on at the same time. This latest one, does it really make sense? Do you not have faith in the IG's report? Look, IG reports, in my view, are both cover-ups and exposés at the same time. They may be helpful information and facts in there. Congress has an independent oversight duty in this regard. Uh, Judicial Watch doesn't rely on IGs to do the work or Congress to do the work. We'd shut down otherwise. We need many investigations to cover all the bases into this uh, real uh, distortion of our uh, criminal processes to protect Hillary Clinton. Once you have those investigations, though, the frustration out there in the public is it seems like there is no recourse. You know, you sort of find out that someone did something or you hear about the text messages or you think, you know, it makes it seem like the fix was in for this one or that one. We find out that, you know, Comey had already written the letter before he even spoke to her. But then nothing happens as a result of that. There's no satisfying conclusion. Uh, it doesn't seem like anyone's punished. It doesn't seem like the rules are changed. So with all these investigations, how do you make them mean something? Well, it is frustrating. Um, James Comey was fired. You know, that was in part over his mishandling and abuses related to the Clinton email investigation. So there was some rough justice there. Uh, Hillary Clinton isn't president. There was rough justice there. Uh, I think the Justice Department needs to step up and uh, take ownership of the Hillary Clinton criminal investigation, reopen it, and take it up. I'm, I'm surprised, and, us, and as someone who was investigating this through Judicial Watch, who exposed the Clinton email investigation, how many Americans still want prosecutions over this and want her to be held personally accountable. I, I think we need to put pressure on the Justice Department not to do something political, mm -hmm. but to do something apolitical by enforcing the rule of law and not letting an election uh, be an excuse 
for refusing to enforce the rule of law against someone like Hillary Clinton who have violated egregiously. We just found 10 classified, inf 10 classified emails mm -hmm. related to Middle Eastern peace on her system. We had 18 classified emails on the Wiener laptop from mm -hmm. her system. Anyone else would have been arrested outright. Mm -hmm. We don't need a special prosecutor. The Justice Department can investigate and enforce the law uh, really quickly if they wanted to. And if they're not, they should just come clean and say, uh, we're going to give her a pass just like the corrupt Obama administration did. How do we get to, back to a place where we don't feel like the Justice Department and, you know, God forbid, the FBI are political? I mean, that was before, you know, you felt like when lawmakers did oversight that you would kind of look at their party and whether whether they were tipping one way or the other in their analysis, there was sort of that suspicion among people that were watching it. DOJ and the FBI, I think for a lot of regular Americans, they thought that was just sort of the straight law. And certainly that's what people thought about James Comey before he came forward. Now we're at a place in time, especially after we've seen the text from Lisa Page and, and, uh, and Strzok, and, and you start to realize all these people seem to have a political dog in the fight. How do you get back to an apolitical nature for justice in this country? Well, I, I think the FBI uh, needs to be radically reformed and retooled. Uh, the current leadership isn't working, doesn't seem to understand, is more protective of the institution than desirous of reform. Uh, maybe bring in a review board or something to run the FBI of, of folks who are uh, going to take this uh, issue directly as opposed to uh, taking the establishment method of uh, just protecting the FBI and saying we got to make it work. No, we've got to really uh, examine how the FBI has been operating, mm -hmm. certainly over the last decade, uh, because it was changed radically under the leadership of Mueller and then Comey in terms of sexualization and abuse okay. of power. And, and we've got to have leadership that will confront that and reform it. Tom Fitton, thank you for your time and your work. We appreciate it.